today we're starting a brand new series called Love Stories. We're going to look at the story of Ruth and Boaz this week. And then look what Naomi says in verse 20, chapter 1. Don't call me Naomi, which actually means sweet. She told them, call me Mara, which means bitter, because the Lord has made my life very bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me. The Lord has brought misfortune upon me. But listen, the truth is, man, for a lot of us, we can relate. I think for a lot of us, man, we've been there before, right? Where it feels like God has turned his back on you. Where it feels like God is a million miles away. But man, I'm here to tell you today that, listen, what feels like abandonment is often when God is doing his greatest work. What feels like seasons where he's a million miles away, he's forgot about me, he, ha- he doesn't want anything to do with me, is a lot of times when God is doing his greatest work in your life, you just don't know it. I love that phrase, as it turned out. You could, you could almost say, it just so happens. And I think for like, you know, for writers of stories, for movie producers, like we love to use this whole idea of coincidence, small world, to kind of like build the drama of the whole story, right? But I'm here to tell you, listen, there is no it just so happens with God. <laughs> Let's keep reading verse 9. Watch the field where the men are harvesting and follow along after the women. I've told the men not to lay a hand on you, and whenever you're thirsty, go and get a drink from the water, the water jars the men have filled. At this, she bowed down with her face to the ground, and she asked him, Why have I found such favor in your eyes that you notice me, a foreigner? You see, what you got to understand in context is, man, Ruth had everything working against her. But, man, when Boaz looked at Ruth, man, he looked past all of that. And when he looked at Ruth, he saw something in her. He saw her as valuable. And man, what I'm reminded is that, listen, we are called to love people like Boaz. That sounds funny, but we're going to make it a slogan. Love like Boaz. Here's why. Because listen, God sees people different than the world sees people. And he sees you as valuable. Listen, if you struggle with self-worth, maybe you've been told your whole life, man, you are good for nothing. You'll never measure up for anything. I'm here to tell you, when God sees you, he sees you as precious, something worth dying for. Man, when we have nothing to bring to the table, when we have nothing to offer him in return, he still shows us love and kindness. And if you've been the recipient of that, listen, there's this obligation that we need to turn around and show that to other people. Man, it's not my job to judge people on externals, and we're good at it. That's not my job. That's not what I'm called to do. What I'm called to do is just to simply show love and kindness to whoever God places in front of me. That's it. And we see in chapter 4 that Boaz ends up marrying Ruth, and they end up having this son. And man, what we see in this story, it's a beautiful picture of the fact that, listen, God is in the business of redemption. God is in the business of redemption. You see, while Boaz was Ruth's guardian redeemer, Jesus stepped up to the plate and was our guardian redeemer. When no one else had the right, the creator of the universe stepped up. When no one else had the resources, Jesus was the only one who was like, I'm a sinless, perfect, spotless lamb. When no one else had the desire, God so loved the world that he gave his only son, and Jesus willingly laid down his life to buy us back, to restore us, redeem us, and give us a brand new identity in him, and he calls us his own. God wants to write that redemptive story through our lives, through your life. You know, we're great, I think, at planning out our lives, aren't we? But man, I'm here to tell you this morning, listen, God wants to rewrite your story. God wants to write the script of your life. God, over and over and over again, is in the habit of taking nobodies from nowhere with nothing and changing the world with them. And he sees something in you that you can't even see in yourself. And he wants to do something through you that you can't even imagine. But we have to let go. 
We have to take that script that we've written and just set it at the feet of the cross. Say, God, you write the story of my life. He sees what we can be. And there are times when he's trying to mold us and shape us and work in us. And man, we're just, we're fighting them and we're hanging on. We won't let go of the old self, the old identity. But man, if you could only see what God wants to do. Man, God is in the business of redemption and he wants to do that through your life. But we have to let go. We have to surrender. We have to say what Ruth said, man. Listen, where you go, I'll go. And where you stay, I'll stay.